Da, 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 da. This guy, what are you this doing? guy took a red eye, and he has that much energy. What are you on? <laughs> How are you doing this? Uh, some of that good Las Vegas drug intoxication. Oh my god! Whoa. We've lost him. Whoa! He's gone. Oh He's gone to the other side. Gone to the other side. He's gone to Percy Jackson's doom. Or is that Los Angeles? Don't do it. It's not worth. Was that Los Angeles? Was Percy Jackson Los Angeles? Is that where no, hell is, or is it Las to... Vegas? He went I to think Vegas. They went to Vegas. They stopped in Vegas at the Lotus, but was yes. Was the oh, gate to hell or the underworld actually in L.A.? Are you guys um, doing Percy Jackson stuff right now? Yeah, why not? I think one so. of the greats. Okay, okay. One of the greats. I think it was. I, was just I, was just I, I think you're right. I think it was like California because I thought they started in like Boston and made their way west, right, or something like that. It's been a yeah. long time. You didn't watch the show. <laughs> I haven't watched a show yet. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've only watched the movies for the last thing that okay, I watched. The movies were nothing. The, movies the show were... was apparently amazing. It was. I haven't watched it though. It is. I know. I know. I know. I've heard <laughs> great things about it. I heard that, um, oh man, it was one of the last uh, movies that, um, sorry, one of the last shows that, um, uh, something Riddick. The Chronicles of Riddick? Uh, oh, Chronicles of Riddick? No, 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 no. He's the voice actor for Zavala and Destiny. He's 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 also he's he's an amazing voice actor. Like you you can you're gonna look it up and you're like, oh yeah. He's in he's incredible. Riddick, he, was, he was Zeus. Riddick was Vin Diesel. Zeus was he didn't die, did he? He, yeah, he, died. he was the he was the gatekeeper and he was Heimdall. No, that's Idris Elba. He was Zeus. Oh, you're talking about who passed away. Yeah, passed away. Oh, he, he played Zeus yes. In, yes. in the new... Uh, he played um, in Destiny. He yeah. was... Um, it's, it's something Riddick, right? Oh, my gosh. Yes, what's his name? Sean like Bean. Or something? No, dude. Not from the movie. Lance Riddick. From the TV Lance show. Riddick. Lance Riddick. Oh, my yeah. God. Lance Riddick. It literally <laughs> says Zeus was played by Sean Bean with a picture next to him. You had to specify for the yeah. You know he what? was he was in oh, John Wick prior yeah, to Lance incredible. Reddick. Yeah, he's but incredible. they should replace him with Idris Elba. They should not. Oh, actually, no. I uh, think I think that's a good sell. I honestly, I, yeah. I think people would be happy with that. Like I, I think. Yeah. I mean, the only other option is Denzel, and that won't work out. I'm just kidding. I mean that'd be amazing. It would, but it's a very different. He's very different. <laughs> like it's a yeah. very different the way he's also getting a little old <laughs> yeah. for that for like the parts that Lance Riddick would play. I feel Eric, lock your doors. I feel like someone's about. I think Denzel's about to come and slap you. <laughs> I mean, Just call him old. He is everywhere. He is Dude, everywhere. I hey, I am an avid fan of Denzel, <laughs> but he uh, is like, aging. But yeah. he's a, he's older now. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look at it in the new. Um, what are those movies called? The one where he looks at the clock and he times everything when he like just wrecks people. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Book oh of Eli? Gosh. That was forever ago. What was the that? Clock? Book of Eli when he plays a blind man? No, the Book of Eli is peak Denzel. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. But uh, he looks at the clock and beats the crap out of Oh, Man on Fire? No, there's a. It's a series. There's multiple of them. It's an oh. action series where he's just like this badass ex assassin. Denzel. Yeah, it's Denzel. Um, I don't remember the Equalizer. Yes, Equalizer oh, one, two, and three. That's that's a movie. That's not so a I never saw that. So Equalizer one is Denzel at like peak physique. Peak. Yeah, and he's beast moding it. Equalizer two. You're like, oh, Denzel still got it. <laughs> Equalizer three. You're like, there aren't a lot of fight scenes in this one because you're you're uh, you're getting on there, but you're getting on there. Oh, not to put him out to pasture. Dude, I know he's no, still he still him. wrecked yeah. the movie. Like he still did such a good job with presence in mm -hmm. the movie. He's gonna be reprising his role in Othello as a uh, as the king. Oh, nice. I'm very excited. Yeah, yeah. Very nice. Anyway, 
But yeah, how was your we drinking? week been? <laughs> Wait. Oh my gosh. Well, I mean, it's been two weeks. It ha- that's why I'm getting at it. It's been two weeks. We yeah. have. Okay, okay. We only have two whiskeys left in the Flaviar. See, I ha- don't have my box yet, so oh, like, God. unless we want to like, do we want to ride the lightning and just be like, no, it'll show up by next week. Oh, I'm shocked that it hasn't shown up. Me too. Yeah, I am too. That's weird. Me too. I'm gonna probably weird. have to check the, the shipping while we're doing. Good this. news on my box. Ash double checked for me. I have all the vials, and they're all the right numbers for the next. <laughs> Oh, nice. <laughs> Ash popped all of the do- all the days. She was like, no, nah, we're going to find out right fucking now. Yeah. Hey, that's I, I was fair. doing it, and she was next to me, and my fingers are big, and her fingers are small, and it was just like, I was, it was painful, and she's like, let me do that. <laughs> yeah, I got this. I got this. Oh, my gosh. This. No, um, I mean, I don't mind doing two, but how how has the week been? Let's Eric, let's start with you, because you're more of the mystery than me. And, well, actually, no. You got... I'll go whenever I feel like it. You guys go. <laughs> I'll I'll just choose a moment. I'll just choose a boom. moment. I'll, it'll be in the middle. I'm going to start because mine's calls. a downer. I woke up this morning and my roof is leaking. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ooh. So I get to work on that tomorrow. And then uh, my freaking cow, she keeps getting into the food pen. So we I, I took some measures to stop it. It lasted mm. 11, like a week or so until she figured out how to get in again. So that's Ooh. been fun. But uh, mm. other than that, I haven't had too much time for games. This is the first time I've like sat at my desk in a while. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I've played games, but like I, on the couch. Um, yeah. Interesting. I've been, okay. there's been, so, I, I, there's been so much work getting ready for the new year. Like, I uh, I've, there's so much wood that I have chopped. I'll I'll send you guys a picture, <laughs> so wow. y'all can see the difference. Pay not pay no attention to the hobbits in the back. I thought I thought <laughs> that was a I thought that was a baby. <laughs> no, that Just was my cackling. Oh my god, cackling as she as she does. Mm, oh I love man. That. Um. Funny. Oh, and what I sent okay. y'all pictures of was my options currently. Oh, or the see, next see, see. selection. Yeah, let me pull we'll, that up. Actually, we'll have to look at that now. I did want to ask. Be well. I guess we should buy enough. I I should buy enough Flaviars to match whatever y'all have. But mine stopped at some point, mm. and so what? I have to. I don't have any credits right now. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like mine, mine stopped charging my card for some reason. Oh, so man, I I'll have to buy however many credits y'all have to kind of catch up, most likely. Four. Oh, uh, I have oh, four, geez. which I'm assuming is a lot. That is that is a lot, but yeah, that's so okay. That, we'll figure it out. I, I I will just have like a backup. It'll be fine. Yeah. Um, we'll figure it out. But let me look at let me look at what Anthony has sent us while I go ahead and volunteer my information. So. Um, as many people may know, the week last week was pretty shit. Um, but wait, wait, why would many people know this? I don't know this. Forgive him. We're moving on. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm, I never I'm mind. Not, I now now I know what you're talking about. I'm not, now, now I got. He you. was thinking about. Look, he he was thinking that Nat had like. Something, I, something personal. like his, yes. like a tree fell yes. on his house or something. Uh, yes, well, I yeah, thought I mean, you were talking about your. Yes, I understand now. Yes. I understand. Yes. Look, when we get to my week, you'll understand why I am out of touch. Understandable, so. understandable. So it's been difficult to do anything, let alone like play video games. Unfortunately, that being said, I have. I have started studying again. Nice. Which is nice. good. Which very is good. Really good. Which is very, very good. I am going to study after this. The goal is to go ahead and put in at least an hour every single day. At least an hour every single That's day. That's all it takes. Hell yeah. Yeah. And then I'm I'm really hoping to like pivot into like a, applying by January. Hell yeah. Because 
and then it's either government or it's private. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to have to go ahead and make a pivot pretty yeah. soon here. Both are good options, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been oh, it's it's been bad, but I'm here now with my friends. So Yay. let's go. That seems to be the best solution to and like, drinking. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing some alone drinking. Uh, I thought about uh asking anthony if he was free this weekend to play some wow but i was like i would have i didn't even i would have made time i didn't i didn't even play i like i oh. I booted it up and i looked at it and i was like uh-uh <laughs> hey, that's yeah I, I i didn't even sit here this weekend <laughs> like, yeah yeah you you wouldn't have been available in the first place like the oh oh i'll t- I'll, I'll wait for my video game section I'll okay wait for my video game section. okay anyway continue Eric, how is your week, man? Yeah, How's man. your two weeks been? Yeah, it's been two weeks. Uh, let's see. I was in Vegas. My first time ever visiting Vegas. Uh, Vegas is batshit crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It was also a long weekend. Happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Happy Veterans Day. Uh, yep, yep, yep. And long weekend at Vegas is also like batshit crazy times two. Now, mm-hmm. I have to tell you, there are, there are very few times in life where I look at, you know, something that someone's done. And I'm like, you know what? This was a bad idea. <laughs> not, not, not like, oh, like God. almost nothing constructive about it. This was a bad idea. Now, so Vegas, for everybody involved, Vegas is essentially a street with everything on it. And that yes. street has everything on it and yes that street is like five lanes of traffic one way and five lanes of traffic the other way with a divided highway now they were really smart about how they designed this street they make sure that a lot of the lights don't allow pedestrian crossing right so you can't do anything like that and then they made sure that you know traffic's on this street is pretty much unimpaired by pedestrian life. Okay. So works out really nicely. And somebody went and said, Hey, hold on. Pause. Thanks queen. Thanks queen. Thank you, thank you. Uh, You're the queen. Uh, nice. You are the queen for now. So they decided, Hey, you know what we should do once a year? We should shut down the strip entirely and do an F1 race in the middle of it. Oh, yeah. They do do that, don't they? Well, (laughs) why they decided this, I don't know. You know why? Because for three months prior and three months after this F1 race, they are building and constructing the stands and everything that has to do with this one F1 race. Damn. A third of the, almost half of the year traffic in Las Vegas is absolutely terrible because of one one, one race, F1 race for yeah. one day. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I who decided this? Who said this was a good idea? I don't know, but they're wrong. <laughs> they are I incorrect. Mean, Eric, there's there's no way to to uh negotiate with those who go to nascar and f1 races no i have no problem with an f1 race in las vegas just don't do it no no i don't think you understand i don't think you understand it's the same people (laughs) like i know that you say you have no problems with them but like literally they cause the same thing that you're going through such a terrible idea so then you add in the fact that they have light you know at red lights they have cameras so if you run the red light, it goes snap, snap, and then sends you a ticket in the mail. All the lights, I think, their cameras are broken in Las Vegas because they have cameras. I checked, but every single red light, people run the red light because they don't want to miss the next light like, because like they've been waiting in traffic. Or like... like or they just pull out in the middle of the intersection <laughs> so that they make it in the next light, you know? <laughs> and so every everything was gridlocked. The traffic for one of the days to move a mile was like an hour and a half. I shit you not. Wow. We had multiple Uber rides canceled. It was wild. 
Oof. Wild experience. So we ended up walking like everywhere. A, they don't put like a little bridge that goes over the road or anything like that? Oh, they do. They do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we ended up walking most of the time okay, everywhere. That's what I figured. Okay. Right. And that was just the way we had to do it. And Truly so. Unfortunate. But yeah, the Vegas was crazy, crazy city. That whole experience is very wild. So the Did first yeah. first half of the experience, of course, for anybody who didn't know, I was there for the Judo Veterans World Championship, mm -hmm. um, which was a, an insanely cool experience. And there were 40... 40 fighters in my division, I think, or something like that. Okay. And about a third of them, there were about four guys who had like medaled on the world level, done Olympics, <laughs> like really good. I faced against one of those guys first round. And oh. so very first round, I had one of the worst draws of the tournament uh -huh. and of course for anybody who doesn't know like this is not i'm not ready for this tournament yet like <laughs> like i i accept that this I'm is still like a few years out this is this like is like when you go and watch the boo saga and they go to the tournament and yeah the first draft it's like wait what no no no, no. Yeah. goku and vegeta are supposed to fight last what are you what are yes. you doing <laughs> Mm, so so mm, i get not goku or vegeta you're krillin <laughs> yeah. and you're fighting got boo got it yeah. got it yeah. <laughs> so so i get this guy from georgia funnily enough he was from the the country georgia mm -hmm. and the georgian guys are beasts man like georgia yeah. kazakhstan brazil france oh. japan those are names you don't want to see in your draw you know first first round <laughs> So Eric, did you get tossed? Oh, so I I go into this fight and Josh. So after the fight, I was talking to Hannah and Hannah was like, yeah, you should have heard Josh last night. And he was looking at me and he was like, dude, Eric got fucked with this. Draw. <laughs> so I had. I can see his face when he's like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> fucked with this draw. So I get into this match. I get into this match, and this guy's like, he's like stacked, Edge. man. Edge. He's like, yeah, he's, huge. he's probably a little shorter than me, but like a tank, right? Mm -hmm. And I go up and I'm grip fighting the crap out of this dude. And this guy is strong as all get out. And he tries to get a throw on me, but I kind of dodge it and I land on my side and he gets a Wazari, right? Okay. So the match is not over. But I stand up and for the next, I look over at Josh and he's like, dude, just keep at it. Just keep at it. Yeah, he yeah, tells yeah, me yeah. what to do, you know, doing his thing. And for the next two minutes, I fight this guy tooth and tooth nail, and nail. Yeah. man. <laughs> and he can't do anything. And I'm like, yes, got it. Got it. And I am, I have this guy on the ropes. I can tell he's frustrated. Well, he's frustrated. And we have about 30, 40 seconds left on the clock. And I go for a move. No. And I feel his arm come over top of me. <laughs> and he throws me right over. And I was like, shit. <laughs> but I I gave one of the best guys there a good run for his money. I um did he give you the shake of like good game? <laughs> yes, dude, he did it. He had like that firm hand grip, man. So just, one of the just, things that I did as I was grabbing, I was controlling his sleeve a lot and I was grabbing his lapel a lot. And whenever I would have his lapel, he would like put his hand over mine and like push it down. And so by the end of the fight, my whole, the tension right here, oh, my whole hand felt like it was tired. on fire. Yeah, dude. On fire, man. How's your grip strength right now? It's good. It's good. On that yeah, hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Afterwards, how was your grip strength? Oh, I could like I, my hand was like stuck like this. I like <laughs> yeah. couldn't move it. I know exactly where you're at with that, dude. It was. I feel that with like heavy dead, deadlifts, my hand starts to like crazy. go out, and I'm like, oh, I can't really squeeze my hand. Now, crazy. Here's where it gets crazy. So this tournament is interesting in the sense that it has a 
lo- a repassage, a loser's bracket. Oh. But your guy has to make top top four or top eight. I, I think top four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your your guy has to make top four. If he makes top four, you get to fight into the loser's bracket and try to win your way back up. Okay. My guy was easily top two in my division. It was okay. like him or one other dude. Uh-huh. And he was fighting. He The next guy he fought Number one wasn't seed. even close. Wasn't even close. Oh. He just munt. Like, the guy didn't even give him half a fight that I did. Just Hell like, yeah, boom, slammed. Yeah, next guy after that, not even an issue. He just, boom, done. Now, he is now in the quarterfinals. He wins this match. And I get pulled back in. And I'll get to fight. And I'll get hey, in the episode. Who do you fight? Well, so he's going <laughs> in this quarterfinal match, and the guy's like running away the whole time. Okay. They can't even do anything to my guy. My guy goes in and he tries to do like a Tayatoshi, which a Tayatoshi is like you go across and then you kind of like you kind of like do your knee like this and you throw him over your over hip your this knee. Way, yeah, 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 right? yeah. The guy didn't want to get thrown. So he went down and he just dive bombed onto the guy's knee. Ooh. Is so that illegal? Not if it's intentional. So, but he was trying to sprawl out and not get thrown. And if you're controlling the throw good enough, then you, he shouldn't be down there anyways. But like the minute he felt it, he dove for the guy's knee and just like football tackled it. Fuck. My guy's knee caves. Yeah. He's laying on the ground. He's in pain. Yeah. He tries to stand up. And he can't. Caves (sighs) out. Can't stand up. And uh, so. What a scummy way to go out. So he couldn't he couldn't finish the fight. I felt so bad for this guy. This guy was an amazing fighter. Should have meddled at this tournament. Winning this match that he got injured in would have pulled me back in and and gave me another chance to fight for a medal. And instead, he got injured and had to drop out of the tournament. Fuck me, dude. That sucks. Was this all on Tuesday? Yeah, this was all on Tuesday. All on Tuesday. Does that, you can tell us the more. Did y'all get to fight on Thursday then? Or was Thursday and only if you made it to Thursday? No, Thursday. So the way they did the tournament, while I get my whiskey. There we go. The way the way they did the here, tournament gentlemen. is that every single day, they... Is it the right one? 23? Yeah, today yeah, we're I mean, having the white wine. Okay. Apparently. It looks like it. It looks pretty light. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, Eric, go ahead as you're pulling so, these out. The um the tournament is broken down with different age groups every day. So I fought on Tuesday, but like Josh and others on my team fought on different days. And they had their full division. So each division was was only a day. So everybody that went to fight at this tournament, they only fought one day. Thanks, Ash. (laughs) Nice little bottle of piss. Ew. Oh, my gosh. It better not be. So we're looking. But anyway, Jesus Christ, mate. And so we had a a bunch of people who got third. We had a bunch of third place fighters. Oh, awesome. We had a bunch of third place fighters. Yeah, it was good. It was good. We're hyped. We want to go back and uh do it do it next year again wherever we're hoping it's in europe okay i was about to so say I, can it sounded like europe you do it. would didn't want to go back to las vegas <laughs> earlier <laughs> not, oh not yeah and so the rest of las vegas after that i was like okay let's get lit and then i got so, deathly sick no. um after my tournament so thursday and friday me and B were like dying. That sucks. And so we had to get over that. And by Saturday, we felt good again. You know, 
I stayed up almost all night on Saturday night playing blackjack with a good friend of mine. And uh, that went pretty well. I think I was only minus 100. Uh, the whole I played a bunch over the whole week, and I was about minus 100. I was going to say, did so, you gamble? Did you yeah, gamble? Yeah. Did I did a bunch of blackjack. I tried out a bunch of different things. Um, I am pretty... I have most of basic strategy memorized. It's pretty easy to do. So I, I have a little bit... The house has a 0.4% edge over me. So, you know, I'll go up and I'll go down. I okay. uh, I typically will count, but I usually don't stay long enough. At, like, the way that they shuffle the cards, I'll, like, sometimes raise my bet based on the count. But doing low raises so that they don't really care you're not gonna get called to the side by security is what you're saying eric yeah no honestly if you're counting cards in vegas because every everybody dealer does. and every you know, like all the high betters are counting cards honestly they they really don't care unless you're doing teams and like scouting and not playing blackjack right right the minute you start having a team and you're trying to scope out tables and then going in and like sweeping tables while the that's count is high. Like, that's whenever they send, send somebody from the room. That's yeah. when they're like, hey, no, uh, don't do this. But if you're just counting the cards and changing your own bets while you're at a table for a few hours, they're like, Whatever. you, you're, you, they may, if you start betting high enough numbers, they might, uh, they might lower your max bet. So if yeah. the table maximum is 3,000, they might say your max bet is, you know, 500. Did they have Texas Hold'em? They did. They have a bunch of Texas Hold'em. Mm. What are we drinking, gentlemen? 23. Yeah, so this is a this is a New Zealand whiskey, which I don't think we've done a New Zealand Bunch whiskey. And it smells like white wine. Fruity, nice. It's very mm. white wine-esque. I think Anthony kind of hit it on the nose. It smells like a honey wine a little bit. It's definitely got honey on the tongue. Yeah, I get a lot of honey citrus. Oh, it's like a. It. It's like a. You can tell it's going to be a dry or a bitter white wine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it smells really nice though. I will say it smells. It's a great bouquet. Yeah. Yeah, it's sweet. It smells sweet on the nose. It says rich very sweet. On the tongue. Oh yeah, where's my book? So I'm very surprised. Now, this well, is have you a... ever I don't know what rich tastes like because I haven't eaten gold like some people. The... Ah, that is a thing. Humorous. Yeah, yeah. I'm interested to know what, what kind of this is. Well, I guess cheers. It smells like wine. Welcome oh back. God. Cheers, gentlemen. Well, oh, well, welcome back. Burr. Did you uh, run into Keith Lee as you were eating any food? Mm. I did not. Mm. Interesting. It is. It's white huh. wine. <laughs> a, a little. It is definitely sweet. It's it is sweet. light citrusy. It has kind of this middle complexity. I think I need a few more sips to figure that one out. But there's tough. It has a very nice, pleasant burn that kind of lasts for for a while. A while. I'm actually. still feeling it. Yeah. Or maybe I haven't eaten. This is where having like what what is this even? No, this is only forty five percent. That's an inch. Like I'm just now getting like some like after effects of like toffee on like breathing out. Yeah, it's got a, it's got like some pepper notes to it that last a long time, like this spicy note. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a hot honey wine type of deal with a little bit of woody 
toffee notes mm. in the middle that are quite pleasant. Mouthfeel is very thick. If I would say, I do think it it leans towards this white wine area, mm-hmm. which may drive some people off. But if I were to like white wines. I wish white wines tasted like this. For sure. It's rather a, than white wine. It does taste it's like it needs full. to be served chilled. Like a white mm. wine. Chilled yeah. may be good. Yeah. Yeah. I would see this with one with ice. Maybe a little bit like a water to kind of like um No, actually I like the heat. I like I, the heat I like the heat. I, I feel yeah. like maybe if you chilled the glass and mm. poured this into a chilled glass, mm-hmm. that may be really nice. Mm-hmm. That is that is definitely something that I can keep in my mouth and kind of um, see what it tastes like. Pause. It almost has an elderflower liqueur flavor to it. Mm-hmm. Like a little bit floral perfume. Hmm. Yeah, it's very unique. Very unique hmm. whiskey. I, I've we have not tasted something like this from the bo- from the box from the I, jars. Well, the only one that would be close would be the what was it? It was in Japanese one of our one? tasting kits. It was oh. the third Japanese one. It was called. Let me pull up our notes here. Oh, you got to take your time with that or else if you take it too fast, it is very angry at you. I think that just happened to me, too. Mm -hmm. I was like, something's something's not right here. Something's not right. No, it's that cherry, guys. It's that cherry. Mm. The Akashi. Yeah. The Akashi. The Akashi whiskey was similar in palate. Like, I would... If I were Flaviar, I would love to see a tasting comparison between the Pocano Pocano whiskey, which is this whiskey, and the Akashi Japanese whiskey. For sure. You know, I think this would go really good with like some Mongolian beef. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh. (laughs) <laughs> this will go good with that. Matt opens up Uber Eats. <laughs> this would be Shut up. this would be a great choice with um some Ethiopian food too. Dude, Eric, look oh what you did. Gosh. Look oh. at you look at you with your with your little niche recommendations. Your little hey, Ethiopian, Ethiopian food, food slaps, really good. man. It's really good. No, slaps. I'm not saying it's not great. I'm just saying you're like, oh, look, let me go ahead and drop a little bit of culture in here. You said Mongolian yeah. beef, which is like, yeah, it's good. But what about that Ethiopian food, though? One percent of people know what that tastes like. <laughs> Maybe less. <laughs> well, no, that's true. It's actually pretty popular in terms of like a uh, uh, culinary experience and like. On the western coast, I would think. Dude, when we lived yeah, I don't... in Atlanta, there was only like one Ethiopian place anywhere near us, which was I have one. Sad. Yes, like, it's it's like out in the it's like far and few, but few and far between. Yeah, if that makes sense. Yeah, gentlemen, I, I I liked this up until I got like into it, and then I went fast mistake do not take this fast do not take it fast. do not take this fast pause <laughs> hold up wait a minute oh hold up wait a minute something ain't right uh, somebody got ice is somebody swirling this nice anthony are you no, i don't have a, oh can you hear this yeah i can hear that oh sorry i was literally like watching my chat mic uh, to see if it was making noise, and it wasn't earlier. <laughs> I guess I got a little too aggressive. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You were pushing it too hard there. Buddy. Yeah, no, I I made um uh, like a month or so ago. I made Ash some fidget toys, and they are hmm. Jack Skellington yeah, as a pumpkin. I don't. Oh, nice. I'm seeing them in slideshow format. I I think you're in. Hmm. Yeah, you're slideshowing for us right now. But a tasting tip for this one: 
run that down the channel of your tongue. Don't let it touch the sides. For anybody who's like watching and wondering and wondering, oh, this sounds interesting. I might want to try it. The bitter, t the bitter um, affectations of this will overwhelm the actual flavor of it. So I would just like, I would let the tip and um, broad uh, surface of your tongue do most of the tasting, and avoid the sides because I did that and it's no bueno. No bueno. Ooh. It's very peppery on the sides. Ooh. Very, very peppery. It is. Very peppery. It and does have like, like a heat to it. That is. Mm. Since we have to go slow with this one, I'll give you all a short aside here. So I was talking about how I have like 20 tons of tree to work through, right? Luckily, my neighbor brought over his wood splitter, which is a motorized piston that delivers 20,000 pounds of force through a sharp wedge to split the wood for you just by holding this little lever. And okay, uh, if you've ever seen one, usually they're horizontal. So it's like, here's a plate, here's the wood, it pushes and splits the wood. Well, this one can okay. stand up. So the piston's coming straight down and splitting the wood. Ooh. So you don't have to pick it up, especially for big pieces. You just like roll it onto it. Right. Okay. And so I did that for several hours yesterday by myself. Um, and he did a bunch of it on Saturday. Now, as I'm going to bed, uh, you know how the brain likes to make you have a thought experiment like while you're driving so that you don't make a mistake like oh what if i drove into this you know tree right now it's like it's trying to like tr what would i do it, uh, those are just like intrusive thoughts but yeah i know what you so mean. Uh, well me and a lot of people who never had heard about it from psychology thought that I, they're you're like i'm crazy something's wrong with me no it's actually your brain trying to remind you that you might feel safe right now but you're not you're not yeah. so yeah. don't freaking relax that much we need to pay attention makes sense it's your body's way of saying hey we are still soft fleshy things yeah well my mind decided <laughs> ahead, to do continue. that very delayed i'm falling asleep my eyes are shut I'm thinking about something else and then suddenly my mind goes what if your leg was underneath that bro and like Can visualizes you the it. crunch I, I did it happened Can you? yeah yeah, my brain Horrible. just did. Horrible. Yeah, I'm Ugh. there. Ugh. Yeah. Yeah, the so this whiskey. And <laughs> yeah. yeah. <No. laughs> I equate it to um, uh, A Quiet Place uh, Part 2, or the second one, when the kid steps it. into the bear trap. I haven't seen it, bro, but we saw we saw bro. the prequel. Did you see the prequel? I haven't He's... seen the prequel, not yet. Oh, that one but... was good. I got to see two, though. I'll check that out. Two is... Two starts you out, and you're like, yeah. he, "I'll just say you." The bear trap is a scene. I think. I think the and you're just like, "Dude." I think they showed that in the trailer a little bit. They did. I okay. think so. Yeah, yeah it little. is. It's really hard. To when watch. we when like, we I was like, when we finished the prequel, my wife was just like, "That was just a good movie," like, yeah, just a good dude. movie. <laughs> uh, what was it? The the dad from the first one he's the one who started the oh, started yeah. the i think he directed it jim or, jim from the office john krasinski yeah, or something or, yeah he yeah. was behind that entire movie's plot or whatever yeah it's really cool I think he wrote it i'm not sure but like dude brilliant idea yeah i really want to play the video game but i'm terrified dude as a user mic have you because have you seen have you seen the previews for that uh the game yeah no yeah. Oh my gosh! Watch some pe some people playing it is like very entertaining for sure. I hope it uses a mic. Like you have to have a mic. Mm -hmm. Oh my god! It That's picks that up, good. and if you look at the monster for too long, your heart rate starts to go up. So like you have to look away, Ooh, and you have to geez. move slow. Like it's dude. And there's a VR version, <laughs> so like you can like you can be there. Mm -mm. What? A oh my gosh! No <laughs> heart rate monitor. Oh no! They they have that scary too. game. They have it. <laughs> Inter interactions could be endless. Oh yeah, for sure. 
for sure. If you put a freaking vest on me and like make me feel confined and then put a headset on me, I'm going to freak the fuck out. The- like, <laughs> like get out the way because I'm, I'm a big man, but I'm scared. <laughs> I'm real little on the inside guys. <laughs> Dude, you with the heart rate thing, you reminded me uh, a show that we just started watching is pretty good called Tracker, mm. and it's like a Tracker. it's like a spiritual successor to Supernatural, but not in the supernatural sense, in like a real world sense. So the the main guy, he's basically Dean. Uh, he's a really cool actor. Okay. Uh, apparently, Dean, what is his name? Jensen Ackles is in season two, though. Jensen yeah. Ackles, which my wife is. <laughs> yeah. Of course, he is. Yeah. Um, but like when you start watching it, you're like, if you've seen Supernatural, you're like, that's Dean. Someone, someone was like, totally we want Dean. you to model your character <laughs> after Dean. Uh, but it's really cool because they oh, do that whole thing where you know he's going from job to job because he is a tracker. He goes to like rewards for finding people you know um, whether the people went to the police and the police can't find them or they don't want to involve the police or something like that like he mm-hmm. he tracks people down um and takes the you know the reward money that's pretty neat mm-hmm. and he travels around in an airstream which is which is even cooler so gentlemen before we continue this conversation let's go ahead and rate this one so we can start the other one i want to keep this going Oh, wait, we're doing two today? Are we doing two? Because I feel like we should do two. We have two weeks to catch up with. I just need another glass. That's getting lit. I I got another glass here. I have another glass. Okay, one second. One second. Oh, please. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Pour it. Nah. What do you think? How would you you rate this? Well, first off, hi, Lisa. What's going on? Yeah. Uh, second, I would. I honestly like. It's very interesting, but I don't like this one. Um, it would be very upfront, Eric. I think you've ruined whiskey for me. <laughs> what? Why Every me? Every single time that I taste anything that has a, like a cherry affectation, I'm like, oh no, oh, no. it's Robitussin. Oh, no. I hate it. <laughs> no, you destroyed all seriousness, him. Um, it's just not my cup of tea. It's a very interesting uh, flavor book, flavor accompaniment, and I'm interested to see what that distillery also has on tap. That being said, this is not mine. Like it's, um? I feel like it's a little too light, even though it is a very rich experience. The actual flavor affectations are not my favorite. So what would you so rate it? Just, I would give it a three. Uh, I would give it a three. Yeah. Uh, price? I'd pay $45 for it. Nice. Thank you. And it is you not go. a daily driver. <laughs> it is definitely not a daily driver. Definitely not a daily driver. I don't driver. think we've run into a daily driver since... It's been a while. I think it's been... Uh, Man, in the Flaviar, it's probably the last one was the Frey Ranch that we had, right? Yeah, I don't think we've run into anything since then. Yeah. That was a while ago. Oh, my God. That was a while ago. No way we went through all of this. There's got to be something that we liked. Da- Eric, look at the data while uh, Anthony gives you his answer. 3 out of 10, 17 bucks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, Anthony, I couldn't even give it a... Careful. I couldn't even give it a, a, a meh. I mean, I I knew I knew what he thought the minute he was like this fucking white wine. This tastes like white what wine. What is white slog? What, what, what is this white wine? <laughs> Get the slog out of here! No one cares about this shit. This madness. Bad madness. This bottle of piss should be Get drinking it. by the. <laughs> Scurviest dogs. Scurviest this is like one of those things where like your voice sounds completely different to yourself in your own head. I had no idea that I sounded like a pirate <laughs> and also a constant drunk. <laughs> <laughs> good God. But yeah, it smelled really good at first, but the more I drank it, the worse it got. Yeah. Like the first sip or two wasn't bad, but the more I 
the more I drank it, the worse it got. I gave it away. <laughs> I gave the rest away. <laughs> so funnily, funnily enough, like all of the way that I, I, I'm putting this forward is so, so weird because I actually don't, I, I think this is pretty pleasant. Uh, mm. It smells really nice. Mm -hmm. I think it has some genres of food that it'll go pair really nicely with. Mm. I think there's a slot for this to drink that'll be really nice. It's floral, herbescent. It's it's not it's for a whiskey drinker. No, it's not. It's for yeah. a wine drinker. Yeah, it's it's yeah. And I I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yeah. I don't think the person who's going for a whiskey should go and buy this expecting a typical whiskey. It's just not that type of whiskey. No. It is something a little bit different than it's that. something else. It's something else. But I do think it's pleasant for that. Now, funnily enough, of course, if you've been watching this show, our rating systems are uh, uh, skewed between us. Uh, I also put this at around a three. Ooh. But I do think it's quite pleasant. I don't think it's a daily driver. I don't think I'd go out and purchase this. No. But I think if I were at a restaurant that offered this at like. With a food pairing. With a food pairing specifically. I'd see this as a five. Like if this were at Desta or, or like some Ethiopian restaurant, I would get this every now and then instead of the honey wine. For sure. And I'd be really, I'd love that. Oh my God. I had a rice beer the other day <laughs> locally. A rice oh yeah. Beer. yeah. It was really good. I've had one of those before. They yeah, are, I have it, not they had are really good. Before. Well, interesting. when Is you're here, like a different brand of wheat. Yeah. Now, sure. when you're here, we can get I mean, Indian pizza Asheville. and rice wine. Oh, I'm so I'm sorry. Rice beer. Oh I, I just said wine. Rice beer. Rice beer and Indian okay. pizza. Oh. Tikka masala pizza. Guys. Guys, no. guys, guys, guys. There is a um, pizza place in Houston called Gold Tooth Tony's. <laughs> and it is Sicilian styled pizza. And it is, I kid you not, it is the it is the most fat kid pizza I have ever had. It's like, it is so good. And it's like, my wife introduced me to like one of the, forms of it and every single time there's like an opportunity for me to buy food at home and not worry about anybody else eating it i will buy an entire <laughs> <laughs> i'll buy an entire one and i'll eat it and i'll be so ashamed but i'll be i'll feel so good <laughs> dude there was anyway, a continue. there That's was a fad in like. in sicily did you ever try it and it trickled into the states for some people did you ever try deep fried pizza it is little no, Anthony. It is a deep fried pizza. Really, the crust is deep fried. Yes, interesting. Like, it's so good. It's yeah, so <laughs> hell yeah. I'm laughing because I'm so giddy about it, <laughs> but at the same time, I'm so ashamed. <laughs> I I will say, while I was in Vegas, you just reminded me. Yeah, I finally got to try because I'd uh -huh. never been there before. Um. What's the? Oh my gosh! You got this. Uh, it's called Giordano's. I finally got to try Giordano's. What's Giordano's? Which is the Chicago deep dish. Oh yeah, famous pizza place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all right. It's all. It's all right. I. Yeah, it's all right. It is really. It like. It's really it. cool. I yeah. love deep dish pizza, so it's right up my alley. I would get that so much if it were near my house let me look up gold tooth tony's for you anthony and eric <laughs> gold tooth now tonys. i will while you're looking that up i will uh go ahead and rip the band-aid off um because for 60 dollars, i i think you can do better pocano 60 yeah bro for the pizza no. wait yeah i think no. for 60 it's a hard sell that's ridiculous. sixty dollars for the um, yeah. So. Can I share my screen? It's a tough sell. 
You should be able here, to, yes. On. Yes. Here, 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 should be here, able here. to. And it should go, everything works perfectly. Wow. Ooh. Yeah. That looks tasty. Yeah. That looks yeah. tasty. Is that? Yeah. Is that? So. Brisket? Where is it? This is this is what we get. Bro, when I tell you, when I tell you that <laughs> my mouth is going Oof. insane right now. <laughs> wow. That, is, that looks good. That is ricotta cheese. That is uh that is mostly just like um uh a spicy kind of tomato tomato uh uh tomato paste and these are meatballs. Wow. And they are insanely good. It's like <laughs> oh my god. Lasagna hybrid. <laughs> Literally, it's so good. Oh my god. Anyway, that's what I wanted that's to cool. that's, that's what I wanted to show y'all. But yeah, hungry pot for sure. For sure, Hungry Paimon. For sure. <laughs> but all that to say, um, I'm glad that you had some good food experiences while you were in uh, L.A. Sorry, oh, yeah. Vegas. I got to do Hell's Kitchen. Yeah? Really? Yeah. I got to do Hell's Kitchen. We got to go eat at Hell's Kitchen, which... <sighs> Gordon, if we ever have you on the show. <laughs> uh, One day. Hell's Kitchen was amazing. If you got the the Beef Wellington experience. Oh. Absolutely unbelievable. The Beef Wellington experience. So the, what they do is they have a menu that you can kind of choose from. The One of the kitchens, the blue kitchen, will do your appetizers. And then one of the kitchens will work on the mains. Was this an episode so, or is this... No, 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 no. So they have Hell's Kitchen at as a restaurant. the Strip as a restaurant. And they do it similarly. And people who they they usually have one of the chefs from the show or something Was like that. Was it the that. same they, old building? Usually there. So they have a film set in Los Angeles, I think. Well, they moved and, and they moved to Miami, I thought. Yeah. So there's a different film set one that you have to kind of get tickets for that to be on the show, yeah. which is totally separate from the restaurant that's in uh, Vegas. However, they have done episodes in the Vegas uh, one before. And mm. Gordon has a, I think it's one night a month where he's actually in <laughs> as a chef for Hell's Kitchen in Vegas as well. Yeah, I feel like okay. there should have been like a tape, like an on an, on the intercom of Gordon every now and then, just yelling "you fucking donkey" or something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'd be great. So there was like, no yelling. Yeah, was um, it peaceful? It was. I mean, it was just a genuinely pleasant, <laughs> yeah, dining experience. Everybody was mm. great and seemed Hell happy. Yeah. So it was not a Hell's Kitchen experience from the TV show, but the. It was kind of interesting. So you had two options. You could order something specific or you could go and do the experience. And the experience is you get one of two different appetizers. It's a three course meal. You get the beef Wellington as your main. And then you get the sticky toffee pudding, which of course is uh, Gordon Ramsay's favorite dessert. Sticky toffee pudding. And you can tell those dishes are... Uh, like tweaked to perfection they're dialed all the way in yes they cook them so much and they do them so like they have mastered those dishes Ugh. and so if you do the three course experience it is unbelievable every bite i put into my mouth was just at like perfection the scallop perfect the the glaze amazing the beef Wellington, crispy, savory, mm. like tangy with this wonderful steak sauce. The potatoes were creme fraiche, buttery, amazing. And the sticky toffee pudding was like unbelievable. Damn. Everybody else at my table kind of ordered off. You're they kidding. didn't do that because have they ever seen well, Hell's Kitchen? Well, do they know who Gordon Ramsay is? 
Yes, yes, but they don't. So many, the, like the three of them, really don't like beef, oh, like the beef yeah, Wellington, yeah, 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 yeah. right? Wait, wait, so wait, 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 wait. They don't like beef, or they don't like beef Wellington. What do you mean you don't like beef? They don't like beef Wellington. So one of them didn't like mushrooms. Eric. And so no, 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 no. You don't. <laughs> beef Wellington isn't a <laughs> mushroom dish. Making the crust of a beef Wellington with mushroom as an ingredient doesn't is not like having mushrooms grilled and put on top of your steak. This is a you made the mistake, Anthony. If you haven't had a semi-professional or greater so. beef Wellington, you have not had a beef Wellington. It is a unique. Thing it is very that unique. my wife is, is really good unique. at making. <laughs> hey, I hey, I'm in for it. But like, this beef Wellington was phenomenal. It was I'm so jealous. good. So like, Anthony, you would have loved this beef Wellington. Like, I took one bite and I was like, <laughs> like it was, it was so. Good. I'm not a, so I'm good. not a bucket list person. But if I had a bucket list, at the top of the list would be to have Gordon Ramsay's beef Wellington. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> This was like Solid. as close as you can get without paying forty thousand dollars for a Gordon Ramsay experience, you know. Hell yeah, but, guys. Hell yeah. But everybody else kind of their food wasn't bad, but it wasn't. but it wasn't worth the price of Hell's yeah. Kitchen. Well, they got yeah. the they got the show experience. It was yeah. it was bad. Yeah, it was bad players that didn't know how to yeah. play the game. They didn't know how to cook yet. <laughs> the, but yeah, they. Damn. Um, but yeah, yeah, that was that was also really cool. But yeah, yeah. So, what are we drinking now? Something that smells way better. Twenty four. Oh, uh, you're already the, sniffing. This is the last one. So this is. 24. Are they gonna pull it out? Audience, audience, is this we the best have. One? Oh my gosh, we have finished this fucking box. Get out of here. <laughs> Mine's way over there. <laughs> there it goes. Uh, get this box out of get here. This box out of my fucking face. Does this smell uh, malty? Or am I wrong? It's, it's no. I think I think you should be getting a little bit of malt in there. Oh man, I picked up this the is... uh, I picked up a malted um Woodford's. Pretty good. Pretty good. It was on sale too. Oh, okay. So Guys, this. So news. they ended this with possibly the default of all whiskeys worldwide now obviously as an american audience oh, probably more. here this isn't our wheelhouse but this is a highland scotch mm. oh cool okay i'm so dyslexic exactly that i read lingerie instead of lingering i'm i'm sorry what I am so dyslexic no. that I read lingerie no. instead of lingering, and I was really confused for a moment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. That's no. funny. It checked out the second time you said it. Yep. So grassy, malty, I could definitely a little fruity. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm Cheers to the first box. Cheers. We have now finished Flaviar, the first box. And I got 22, 24 of the way there. 11 twelfths. Mm. Wow. Mm. Wow. Wow. They picked a really good one to end on. That is. Guys, I'm not a fan of Irish whiskey. Now well, you are. Good, because that isn't an Irish whiskey. It's oh, yeah, scotch. it's a scotch. Yeah. It's a Highland scotch. Dude, it's. That is really good. So this wow yeah okay I'm gonna go ahead and go on record Flaviar you fucked up on the fl the the like flavor tasting notes on this one, <laughs> in my opinion yeah there's this definitely is... some peat in there right no I so I don't get a lot of peat there's like this smokiness but this is like oh this is good vanilla creamy mm. buttery it's smooth but not, not like the, the 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 cliche smooth. It's like got a smooth feeling to it. Mm. It almost tastes like a butterscotch. Oh, that's good. 
Very nice. Dude, that smokiness at the end, I still think it tastes like a little bit, a little peaty. But that smokiness at the end really, like, brings all I don't, of it I don't together. taste a lot of, a lot of peatiness, but, man, this is a... This is a cool scotch. This is good. Right here. I'm, I'm... Whoa, whoa, whoa. What was that smell? Yep. Yeah, it smells... It smells good. It smells nice. I got, but I got it a new like smell. It smells like a little funky. It's definitely funky. Yeah, it has like a funk smell to it, but not in a bad way. I have a sweet smell now. Yeah, I definitely get almost, like vanilla. Oh my god, it, it almost smells like if you toasted a strawberry pop tart. I could see that. I do you know what? That's actually pretty good. I could see that. It has like that wow, pop tart smell to it, almost like malty bready. Yeah. With like a little bit of fruit to, notes to it. Oh man. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Oh wow. I'll just Island, go. I mean Island 2007. I don't even want to drink it anymore. I'm just gonna smell it for the rest of the night. Okay. One of my nostrils is closed up, unfortunately. Oh no. And I think after a while, it has like a little bit of burn. So it has an almost toasty note at the very end, like on the after on the after birth. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, I'm glad somebody got that. Wow. <laughs> wow. But, um, wow. But it's good. Mm hmm. Very okay. oaky afterbirth. <laughs> Bro. Uh, Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Brother, this guy stinks. <laughs> oh man. Oh wow. Oh, no. So let's see. Deer, bear, and moose. Fantastic. Who, who actually does this whiskey? Don't tell me they're in America. Oh, I mean not it's called a scotch. So it has mm -hmm. to be a mm -hmm. has to be in Scotland. Scotland. It's cool to be in Scotland. Scotland. And this Yard. is the 2007. The story. Guys, how am I going to buy this pizza at work? At I work? I was going to buy this whiskey. <laughs> I'm focused. I promise. I am focused on this whiskey. This might be like a Flaviar thing. What? It's just a Flaviar thing? Established by Flaviar and Friends. No shit. Founded it's theirs? in 2015. You they do they, they punked us. They punked us the entire advent calendar. They're like, guys. Those, this is what it was all for. They, the very these, end, this is all it was for. These guys right here. Wow. Wow. Well, we're a bit they... late to the party. Previous editions of Deer, Bear, and Moose were extremely limited batches. Just Shut... a handful of cases. And all the bottles found their proud new owners by now. The good news is the next edition is just around the corner. It will be as magnificent as the previous ones. Suck. Every collector's wet dram. Ew. Expect it soon. Very soon. Suck my freaking oh i'm not gonna say it so oh. you can you can buy like some it. of the previous yeah. uh deer mm -hmm. bear and moose uh additions mm -hmm. on flaviar it looks like they are priced all over the place depending on what year you want the 2007 okay. does not seem to be gettable let me let me look at this is this the 2007? It is. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, I, gotta, I, gotta, I gotta stop. I gotta, I gotta. They have a 1999? So, yeah, Flavior hasn't been around since 1999, have they? 
No, the the and Deer Bear and Moose was established in 2015. Like, mm. and how do they have a 1999? It looks like 1998. So Deer Bear and Moose are a Flaviar and Friends distillery. Yeah, it looks like they are either buying scotch from somebody. It mm. looks like they're buying scotch. I would have to think they are because from I would think they because would have a much of these, more prominent. So, for example, their 2008 edition, they have a 14 year old Glen Roth's Speyside single malt scotch. Hmm. So, not all of them are. How dare they? What cheeky fuckers. How dare you give us something and not. And we can't buy it. I mean, I guess that's single barrel type stuff, kind of. Yeah. 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 Which I suppose I wouldn't mind. Maybe we could have bought it if we drank through the whole thing on in December like they intend, I think. No, to be yeah. fair, people who got through this thing in a month, <laughs> you need to talk to somebody. Yeah, that'd be rough. That's going to be, be hard. Like I don't care if you're December. doing one at a time. Like if you have a glass of that every single day, maybe if you're sharing with somebody, something's gonna change. Yeah, something's gonna I guess change. if you're if you're sharing with somebody, you could probably do it in like a night. One, no, one a night, Stop. one a night. No, no. <laughs> the thing is, like, I understand that, like, for some people, boredom exists to the point where you drink. That has never been me. Like the amount the the maximum amount of alcohol that I drink is during this podcast and maybe like one or two glasses during the week. It's why I have ditto. a very full shelf right now. Ditto, ditto. My, my, I cannot get through my alcohol collection fast enough. Fast I can't. Enough. I can't. So yeah. I don't know how people get through yeah. like actual bottles within like two weeks. I'm like, uh, what, no what are you doing, dude? D- you go home and you just like, well, I guess I'll go ahead and finish a quarter today. Uh, crazy i mean crazy. Yeah. some people are just cool like greg uh, that's, I mean, you know your boss gives know you like a 500 hundred dollar bottle and you and your girlfriend drink it in one weekend what yeah it might have been what? more than 500 dollars. remember that story greg told us He's oh, a, yeah, yeah 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 so greg gave you a 500 no no, no 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 remember the guy we met up in yeah no i Kentucky. remember I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His boss gave him a five hundred dollar uh, bottle of whiskey. God, and him and his girlfriend me. finished it in one week. <laughs> Excuse me. This is different tolerances for different so, people. Yeah, you know? you know. So, Flaviar, on one hand, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand. This is a great whiskey, and we'd love for you to sponsor us. It'd be great, you know. <laughs> Let's go. Full circle. Um. Yeah. So, I'll Sweet. the we'll go in reverse order this this time. Eric, uh, you want to go first? Ooh. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go first here. Okay. okay. I'll influence everybody's decision for the the next <laughs> rating. I got I got numbers in my head. I already have yeah. numbers in my head too. This is a phenomenal scotch. Mm. It is buttery, smooth. There isn't a lot of heat here, but there's like just enough to tease you a little bit. It's a little bit sweet vanilla, like caramelly. It's just super nice. I think a lot of people could be, could even say that this is a little bit too sweet, but it's just wonderful. I have to put this close to, uh, I think this is like a seven. Wow. I really enjoy this scotch. Wow. We tied. Okay, Eric. What? Oh, wow. Yeah, I I gave it a seven, too. Go go off, Anthony. I gave it a seven. Yeah, yeah. It's good. I like it. Do you have any Mm. other tasting notes that you want to give? Yeah, um, 
No, it's just really smooth. It has this, when it goes into this aftertaste, it has this little bit of cinnamony sweetness to it and this burn that kind of just like slowly fades over the course of 30 seconds or so. Mm -hmm. And it just leaves a nice, pleasant vanilla aftertaste for that time, like vanilla spicy aftertaste. This is just a wonderful after dinner daily driver. Like if you could get this on the daily, this would be like the the dessert whiskey of every day. It's not mm. too sweet that you feel overindulgent every day, but man, this would be wonderful to have a sip of this after dinner every day. Mm. Easily a daily driver. Easy. How much okay. would you pay for My it? Turn? Oh yeah, how much would you pay for this? Ooh, I'd probably do 140. One Ooh. I would say anywhere between 120 and 160, I'd get a bottle of this. Yeah, this is definitely Honestly, I looked on their site and that's what their other ones are kind of going for generally, and if they had a 2007, I would have probably added it to the cart. Fair. But they have almost every single year but 2007. So, 2007 was a special time. So I, I honestly don't know if you can get this whiskey. To be fair, 2000, 2007. Yeah, there yeah. Be. Anthony. But yeah, this one is insane. Like it smells really interesting right off the bat, very malty, and then later on it smelled like freaking strawberry toast, toasted strawberry pop tarts, and the flavors incredible. Um. It, it's definitely a seven out of ten. Uh, mm, that's pretty great. I'm being honest. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, before mm -hmm. we knew that you couldn't buy it, I was like, I'd easily pay eighty bucks for that, like easily. Really? Um, just because of how unique it is, you know. Like I would not, okay. I would not want to touch it, except for on like a rare occasion personally for sure i'd be like yeah this is really good i will drink it when we're celebrating something or when someone is visiting and they want to try something i'll like offer it up but like i would i just want like one bottle to hold on to uh and given the rarity i.e you can't buy it i would definitely spend as much as eric said now knowing that it's like super scarce 140? Yeah, I, I would consider that. Um, I wouldn't want to, but fair. I'd consider it. Yeah. Matt? Piece de resistance. Me. Wow. Me. Um, BB. Mm. This is a really tantalizing spirit. This is. This is some good shit. <laughs> I'm very surprised. Um, mostly for me, scotches have always been like that kind of you have to love that peat flavor for it to be an enjoyable experience for you. And thankfully, I've always found that experience to be pleasant. Um, contrary to my co host's uh, taste buds and beliefs, I do think there's peat in this. Um, <laughs> And the balance between the authentic authenticity of having it be a scotch and have that peaty flavor, as well as all of the very prominent bready and spicy flavors that go along with it, makes this a very unique um, experience. I would honestly say if you can find this bottle in somebody's house, steal it. Um, if you can't and you value that person's friendship, what are you doing? Steal the bottle still. If even after this, at this point in time, like my, my uh, diatribe is not convincing you, then okay, fine. But make sure that you are sharing that with someone because that's, it's really good. This is going to be an eight for me. Oh yeah. This is really good. It is really, I, good. Um, it is really good. I must interject because I just upgraded it to an eight because I just tried some. Shut no, up. listen to my reason. <laughs> listen to my reason. Look, I've been having bullet on the side, right? That's been my comparator. Yeah. I went and smelled it and suddenly it smelled incredible. 
I taste it and suddenly it tasted incredible. This scotch makes other whiskeys taste better. Taste better. Yeah. So could you imagine doing a I'm not surprised. a freaking line with it? It's magic. It's magic. It's magic. It's magic, dude. It just got yeah. upgraded. Sorry. For sure. Keep going. <laughs> Eight out of ten. So it's awesome. Before I was rudely interrupted by my freaking uh, shill of a partner here. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. No, um, I'm glad that it's resonating with you as well, Anthony. This is a really good drink. I would honestly kill to have this on my shelf because I I would I would have to fight to not have a reason to drink it every single day. Yeah. So it is a daily drinker. It is an eight. I would pay 160 to 200 for this. Um, it is definitely on par for Bardstown for me, like in terms of just like engagement and uh, intrigue. It makes me want to look into the distillery and see what else they have to offer and whether or not they're, it's equivalent. So it's, it's, it's done everything that a flagship should do for a distillery. It's yeah. set the bar yeah. high, and it has encouraged you to also look elsewhere within the distillery's um, catalog and see if there's anything else that entices you. So fantastic. The unfortunate thing is that I don't know that there's a distillery. Well, there is a distillery here, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. Flaviar mm -hmm. is the bottler. So finding out the distiller is is difficult. the problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, all that to say. Fuck you, Flaviar. And yeah. thank you so much for uh, giving us an opportunity to taste this um, yeah. rare vintage, apparently. Yeah. Um, please sponsor us so we can have more experiences with this, this kind of spirit. Because uh, yeah. through the year, we definitely need it. Um, yeah. Really good. Really, really good. Yeah, that one was really good. What, what a way, way to, to sign it. off, guys. What yeah. a way to sign off on this. Um, I'd like to round this off with like, how did you guys feel about your Flaviar experience? Because like, obviously we've talked a lot of shit I, <laughs> throughout, it's, throughout this entire experience. It's very easy for me. I now have, um, of course my brain draws a blank right when I think to say it, but the farmer one. Mm-hmm. The ones that look Farmer. like stills. Frey Ranch. Frey Ranch. Frey Ranch. I now have Frey Ranch in my life. Yeah. So can't yeah. can't trade yeah. that for anything. Well worth. Yeah. I, I it is one of those yeah. things where it's like if you find one out of twenty four that is just like I want this forever. I will buy this yeah. forever. Then it's just like worth it. There is a a spot for Flaviar. Flaviar has a purpose to connect you with the whiskey that you want to drink on a daily basis that you enjoy with friends and family. And it gives you an affordable curated list to be able to do that. Is every whiskey in it good? No. Are there going to be great whiskeys that you get to then have forever? Maybe. And that experience is definitely worth the price tag for Flaviar. So, you know, I think they did potentially yeah. a really good job of doing variety because I think there were oh, a, a very select few that we were like, this is actually bad. Like maybe one or two could have been three. I can't remember. Yeah. But yeah. there was a lot of the ones that we didn't like that we were like, we don't like these, but somebody but else some probably like would. I just not my 100%. Fault. It, we don't like those flavors. I I will say I think the advent calendar is better than the the monthly or tasting boxes. Yeah. So I would sure. say right now sure. if you're looking to Flaviar, Flaviar like look, we're willing to help you on the tasting boxes, like do something. Yeah. But for the the advent calendar right now, hey, that's that's where the money's at right now. You pay a little bit more up front, but you get 24 distinct whiskeys that you get to try that are all, like Anthony said, super unique mm -hmm. and interesting. And so that's super cool. 
Yeah, you get to explore. Yeah. Whenever, in in a in a realm where the price tag has always been a deterrent, and this yeah. is kind of like my sta- my standpoint with Flaviard in general. In a, I would never have been exposed to this world if I did not have these friends. Yeah, I'll just say it full stop. Like I never would have been into whiskey or bourbon if I didn't know Eric and Anthony. That being said, if I didn't have an Eric or an Anthony, I didn't listen to this podcast or anything like that. And I knew about Flaviar and I had an interest. If I was in your corner and I had tried this before, I would immediately tell you to go ahead and try it. Because if you if you are at least interested in exploring this world of whiskey and bourbon with, uh, and scotch, it's a easy it's an easy way to explore the breadth of tastes and flavors that are in this world and find out what it is that you like as well as maybe find a favorite and kind of inspire you to explore explore more 100 percent. yeah yeah and like and- if you don't like <laughs> the sample you're having you just try the next one until you find one you do and you'll definitely find one that you like if you do that strategy There's something in there. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. There is yeah. definitely something in the advent calendar that you. No, I, I meant. And I think if you guys, treated... I meant in the same session. Like we should do that with the next box. If <laughs> what, just keep going until we like one. If none of us gives it higher, uh, a five or greater. If not, if Anthony, none of us gives it a five or greater, you just have to open the next one. Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, <laughs> this is how Anthony. you learn to be like Greg. You just you don't <laughs> fight it. You stop fighting it. You accept it. Anthony, I'm on my third glass of, of bourbon, and that still sounds Good. insane. You're on your third and a half, because that is uncut. Second, second glass of, two two glasses of whiskey, first glass of bourbon. Yeah. So, Anthony, you said you hadn't played much this weekend. Oh, mm-hmm. I, well, uh, that was this weekend, but it has been two weeks, and I remembered. Oh, okay. I very okay. briefly tried out Monster Hunter Wilds. Oh, how was it? Wilds. Ooh, hold on. It was hold open on. beta. I did too. I did oh, too. you did you too. too. Let's go. Okay, so I'm, I want to hear more from Nat because he probably played more than me. I didn't get very far. Uh, I, 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 do, Anthony? I got to like where they said thank you. Uh, they're like, thank you, it. and you can go and explore. It, okay. At the moment, I was just like, okay, this feels like Monster Hunter. It's a little different with the like aiming thing which is neat um but, mm-hmm. but i can't That's remember cool. what was going on so i just i didn't keep going okay probably had to like eat or okay. something okay but it felt good and it looked good i, I like the intro um mm-hmm. i don't know i i used the hammer of course and big bonker it felt pretty good i bonked a lot he kept getting knocked out yep. so i this feels so good oh yeah it looks like it'll be a good monster hunter but i will I say it. one of the coolest things and and they know this too here's the problem monster hunter great series mm-hmm. in the trailer for monster hunter wilds you know what they show off the monkey boss oh kongalala no oh you mean like the in the fire area yes yeah and that that shit looks cool. Yeah. I mean, come on, yeah. come on, that looks pretty dope. Yeah, I'm gonna talk this about guy's that climbing episode. around like, mm-hmm. wham, and you're like, what? This is amazing. Like, it 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 looks it looks cool. That that tech's gonna be really in- that fight is going to be super interesting. Mm-hmm. I think for me. The only thing that I hope is that they finally just improve their user experience for UI interactions. That's all I want. And I haven't tried it yet. How is the UI for the new monster? So they didn't expose us to crap. First off. Okay, I'll answer your question, then I'll go into my experience. Um, They haven't shown us what crafting uh items as well as what um just the overall experience with item management is going to be because i feel like the issue for you is going to be item management yeah 
Like, okay. here's the thing. My favorite Monster Hunter is the one on the DS, like we talked about a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Because the secondary screen has all of the inventory stuff, mm -hmm. touchscreen, and so quick and so easy. They that... made a change that I think okay. you are going to love. Okay. So, they removed any necessity for you to go ahead and specifically put anything on the radial quick menu when it comes to healing, removing uh, status effects, sharpening, or eating, I believe. So they okay. removed all of that. They gave you one radial menu that you can keep for the entirety of your fight. And you don't have to worry about whether or not you have a first aid med uh, plus equipped. You don't have to worry about mega potion. Potion doesn't matter. If you have this radial menu up and you hit it, it's going to give you the appropriate item for your situation. Interesting. So instead of having to go ahead and worry about what's up on your um, little quick menu, the, the quick loadout bar that you can cycle through, or putting a bunch of stuff on a spoke of your radial menu there are four locations the top is your sh is your sharpening the right is your health the left is your effect status removal and the bottom is your cooking i see so, interesting very smart use of the radial menu which they already have and they should have done this from freaking world but it is it is what it is i'm glad that they're learning now and yeah. It has streamlined a lot of it because then you just load up your uh, inventory. The only thing that you want showing up on your little carousel is traps, bombs, yeah. and status and status effect stuff. Yeah. Unless you're unless you're doing something else with your build, but it's all there, which is great. I honestly think that this is the best that Monster Hunter is going is has looked in a very long time. Now okay. I'm going to get into my experiences, Eric. I would play this game. I would play this game so hard. Nah. This is the this is your bid. This is this is the game to get in. Guys, this is the best Monster Hunter has ever been. Full stop. Okay. Ever. Period. It's so good. Oh my god, it's so good. Okay, I'm gonna get into it. I'm not gonna try I'm trying gonna try not to gush. I'm just gonna go ahead and take it like point for point. Um focus mode is a very interesting mechanic. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh full on say there are some caveats to it that I think uh, will be interesting as we get through the game and like just like functionality build wise, like people capitalizing on that, possibly doing a lot more damage. Um, so question focus mode. Yeah, it it's like a move. It, it's almost like a move option, isn't it? It's yes. not like you direct what you were doing. If you choose to use focus mode, you can. No, you can't. Is it like a subset like, though? Like, is it is focus mode have its own moves, basically? Is, based so on what you were doing, it doesn't have its own move. You have one move within focus mode. However, if you are a if you are playing a if you're using a weapon that has very stilted movements, very slow movements as they go through their animations, you can change the orientation of where you land yeah. during that animation with focus mode. So for instance, if you are playing great sword and you have that big true charge slash that you have at the very end that you want to hit that last, that last slash is the most damage that you can go ahead and dish out within the entire game. Everybody knows the, the bad feeling of missing it because you're at the wrong angle. Focus mode allows you to shift that entire angle of the fight of the uh, attack mid attack so that you hit it. Yeah. All you need to do is as you're animating, you're like you've already charged it and you've already let it go. You're just going ahead and hitting focus mode and aligning it. So your center mass with the monster that you're hunting. It's so guys. It's so good. It's so I wonder, fucking good. I wonder if it oh. changes based like so with the great sword, do you swing and then focus or focus yes, and then you can and then you swing. Can, you can do either. You can do either. Cuz I thought I think I kept doing focus first with the hammer, but it would it seemed like it was always 
a different attack than what I intended. With Without focus, focus for the hammer, you're going to, like focus works as you're going through animations. With hammer, you're not running into so much animation lag because a lot of what you do is pretty quick. Mm. Like the animations don't really take a long period of time. The only thing that may shift is whenever you do your big bang attack and your um sorry, the new and improved like whirlwind bash or whatever it is, where like you're like fucking swinging it around yeah eventually finish like that's not something that like you run into with hammer because you'll notice that's very fast that animation is super quick in comparison to great sword where that animation is super slow like it's deliberated to the point where it's like no we know you're going to use this you're going to use focus mode to go ahead and make sure you land that final attack so we're going to make sure that that takes time so that you can line up your your attack as you're doing it. Dude, one thing I couldn't do with the hammer was the slide. There it, is it gone? They they they, they gimped it. So <laughs> they didn't remove it. It's it's still there. Bro, let me get through this. <laughs> I, I promise. I'll hit it. The the weapons are the best they've ever felt. Like I play every single one. Um I don't play bow gun. I don't play bow. I don't play I don't play Insect Glaive. I Insect Glaive for life. I sure as fuck don't play Lance or Gun Lance. Guys, everything feels good. Okay. Everything feels really good. And I I've been a fan for Monster Hunter for I'm gonna say about eight to ten years. This this is probably the most excited I've ever been to to play Monster Hunter since I picked up the game. It's like okay. playing a completely new game. Hell yeah. Um, so, hype aside, weapons feel great. Monsters are super uh, interesting. You have to approach them differently depending on what you fight, and you actually feel that with the three monsters that they allow you to hunt. Th- sorry, four monsters that, you allow, that uh, you're allowed to fight within the demo. The Secret is a great freaking uh, addition to the wealth of tools that you can utilize. There's actually a pouch that you can populate with content that you've gathered through um, running around that you can fill into the Secret's pouch. So you don't have to go back if you're truly gathering a lot. You can have a ton of Mega Potions already stocked in a saddlebag as you're riding around. Um, the revamped... Uh, version of the um, of the quest tracker where basically you can be out in the field and you can set a quest like pretty pretty much like bang on from whatever you see the monster or whatever you're feeling like um, what else am I missing the move set changes are so interesting oh my god um, there's a lot of counter focus kind of play or like um, almost perfect dodge uh features my favorite is like the dual blade if you dodge perfectly you go into this like super quick dodge friendly like frenzy mode and it's super cool ah anyway um and then the monster design guys this this i mean just from the trailer the monster design looks the pretty The monster dope. design is incredible. Like, I, I want to compare it to, like, Worlds and, like, go from there to this. They've, like, I would say it's, like, almost like a filter in the sense that you can tell that it's more realistic in the, in the sense that they've taken the actual, like, animal anatomy and put it into the game. They've been doing that for a while, but I feel like this is the first time where I was like, oh, that looks like the membrane of... A, a jellyfish or no that actually looks like the hairs that would be on the on the body of a spider that makes sense that like it all looks real and it's just dialed up to that fantastical element and just like the breadth of things that they're gonna be, be bringing there's a fucking octopus guys yeah there's a fire octopus a fire octopus i'm gonna say it a third time there's a fire octopus, there's a fucking fire gorilla, and you know him and R- Rajang are going to fucking fight it out in some way. It's going to be so good. And there's a weird eldritch insect that in, uh, incorporates with tar 
there's a tide monster that like harkens to the fact that you used to be able to fight these things underwater. We don't know if that's happening. There may, may be a possible uh, additional weapon that we're going to run into midway through the game that we're allowed to utilize for the rest of the game. This is the best time to get into Monster Hunter, guys. If you are if you are willing to get through the fact that there, chances are they're probably also going to probably make it less grindy. I have a feeling that they're getting there. I'm not sure, but this is the time to get into it. This is this is the time. Like it with everything that they already have behind them with Rath, with like the the previous monsters that they had in the previous games and then no like they haven't even shown repeat monsters they've just been like these are the monsters that we're bringing like off bat it's gonna be great Jeez. and you can so excited you can pause cutscenes. i don't know if you noticed that it's, oh, it's man. so useful pause and skip man pause and skip pause man. and skip yeah so yeah it's it Oh, and it's it might be the it might be the whiskey and bourbon talk. They do the haptic feedback on the PlayStation triggers, which is so satisfying. Uh, mm-hmm, dude. Mm-hmm. I want more integration with the haptic triggers. More. This is a game it's that so I'm, nice. I'm struggling to switch over to the PS5 port because I know it has that featurette, but at the same time, my PC now outclasses my PS5. So I'm not sure which to, what to do. I feel like the PS5 is going to be the best bet, though, just in terms of like that. It's it's just more a more focused machine. I know they said well, they have cross just play, the, but the I don't memory think... loading. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, the memory manage management. I like. I mean, I have yeah. 32 right now. So. No, 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 no. I just mean the the PS5 has one of the best designed memory storage accessing. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like management it, it's just it's on a different par than current computer states are got you anthony what were you saying what was i saying i started reading the chat so i completely lost it yeah ash no if you want to if you want to fight some fucking monsters <laughs> and i need to go ahead and run you through boot camp and get you on some worlds yeah let me know but guys it's oh, it's so fucking good it's so good i'm so excited oh <laughs> last thing last thing their flagship monsters for every single uh their flagship monster that they like launched for this beta is Ray Dow. And you've probably already seen the previews for it. It's the one with the freaking uh lightning powers, right? Mm-hmm. They fucking cooked. Guys, <laughs> they fucking cooked. It's so good. When they when big monsters that are supposed to be the apex predators of the area focus in on you, your health bar spikes like a like a heart uh, be because it's supposed to be like this whole like oh the predator is now focused in on you and it's and it's coming for you for blood and if it hits you it's going to fucking wreck you wow so whenever it does these big charge attacks or whenever it focuses in on you the camera zooms out the heart rate starts going and your heart rate goes along with it like it's genius game design as well as an incredible uh, experience because you're screaming because hopefully you're with friends. So you're screaming in the cam and in, in, in chat and everybody else is screaming too. Cause it's their first time fighting this monster or whatever. So in order to preserve the couch co-op days of old, this online co-op version of this game is oh. the closest that your friends will come to being terrified without not being, without being in a horror game and hopefully intrigued without having to be in an ARPG. I remember. Uh, I think I saw the game will be fully cross-play, but not cross-save. Oh, yes. Yeah. So no. you do you have, have to, to pick your one. platform. Yeah. And I think I'm going to pick PlayStation 5 just because of the freaking haptics. But it, I mean, like, honestly, for the haptics, I would. I would. Though, yeah. technically, I think they can support haptics on the PC. With the PlayStation Five controller, they, can, they, can. they who you, knows if they can. will. Yeah, that's the trick. Who knows that's, if your can. computer is going to even do it right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man, I'm I'm eager to see what the tech bench is going to be for that game because I was running it pretty well, but I've heard I heard some people having some complications. So, yeah, dude. all in all, to say 
I'm a, I, I know I'm biased. I'm a big fan and I've been very vocal about it. I'm going to, t- I'm going to say it very, very loud. And at the very end of my spiel, I will not speak on it. Otherwise, other than, other than to answer questions, it's the best that monster hunter has been ever. And if you don't play this game now at this level for monster hunter, there's no better entry. I rest my case. Okay. Hey, I'm in. Dude, I heard that the PlayStation 5 Pro is expensive, of course, but the mm-hmm. upgrade uh, compared to the PlayStation 5 is actually, like, very tangible. Like, it's apparently a at least, like, a 47% <laughs> upgraded. No, it is a new PlayStation 5. It is, like, oh, almost the same size as the PlayStation 5 Slim. And yeah, the, the PlayStation 5 Pro is apparently like in real world play somewhere around like 47% better, faster mm, than geez. what we've got. And I'm like, what I've got is already really good. That is, wait, 40%? 47%. And... I think they have 65% more like compute units or something, but realistically, 47% better better performance i I heard i just absolute butt linus tech tips dude they did a thing on it and they have the labs testing and they had them side by side they were playing like final fantasy and it was a huge difference for them i think the only problem for me is that it, it, I just couldn't warrant. I couldn't warrant getting it if you already had one. No, I right? Have yeah, one, dude. It, that's, that's the, the worst part. I, you have to sell I it. Fought tooth and nail for yeah. it, right? Like it's yeah. sentimental. Yeah. I, 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 I love it. I, I don't have a. I mean, yeah. I yeah. It's just yeah. It's one of those things where I wish they just like did the tech the first time through. Yeah, because here because the problem is I don't it, like just say it. Just do the tech it. the first time through or create a system that is upgradable. The modular. Please. Yeah. 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 I mean, you did it with the PS2 like way back in the day, but that, that, that didn't, that didn't like uh, give me it, like what was so difficult about create like for Sony to just create a modular PlayStation system. It does. Eric, it doesn't even need to be modular. I have a quad cortex and bear with me as I go ahead and make these th- these two things connect. Okay. They are at the point now where they have built this machine to go ahead and incorporate features that they know that they can work up to, but they cannot implement and launch on the release day. I don't yeah. know if that's something that you can do with a console, but if somebody can do it with a DSP um, uh, unit and build and build in capability to incorporate outside features and i know that like graphics aren't exactly something that you can just download i get it yeah but we have not moved that far away (laughs) from whenever this this game was released in terms of graphic uh power like the 4090 is is yes incredible piece of technology but if we're looking at the third the 3000 series we're and the 3090 ti or something like that or the 3090 super you're not seeing it's negligible in terms of performance so i i i don't see how it's not possible to find a way to bridge that gap with a earlier model to go ahead and do the same things that a playstation 5 pro can do you're not going to tell me that this thing in this small chassis is not able to do the same thing that this monster in this bigger case can do. It just makes me, it makes me wish that Razor hadn't abandoned Project Christine. I don't know what that is. So Project Christine was a concept that they came up with in the early 2010s where Razer developed this modular tower where each slot could have something plugged into it 
and they had universal connectors so that or at least multiple connectors mm. so that you could essentially upgrade each piece each piece going yeah. forward and the the fact that the PlayStation 5 or PlayStation or Sony or somebody hasn't done this for yeah. PC yeah. console you yes I, I especially cuz it would create don't ask it don't yeah it would create less e-waste you know it's just to. like the have y'all seen the framework laptops yeah now have you yeah i've seen okay yeah, yeah so you know, once you upgrade, you also have an avenue for, okay, turn that into a local, what is it, storage uh, machine. Like, turn it into a server, turn it into something else useful. Don't just throw it away or let it collect dust in the closet until someone eventually mm -hmm. throws it away. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but to answer it. But yeah, Ash, this idea yeah. was, it was like, so was... cool. It's a good idea. If the, the proprietary ability, sorry, the ability to create proprietary modules to add to a framework is probably the reason why I got shut down, though. Oh, a hundred percent. I can guarantee 100%. you NVIDIA was yeah. like, you're not going to fucking do that. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, a hundred percent. dollars that says that you're not. This essentially makes it so that you have to enter in deals with every company Every that is yeah. the master of whatever and then or you have to start creating them which is not something razor had the money to do you go the apple route and you come up you eventually come up with the m1 yeah. or m2 or whatever yeah um, sorry the m4 is where we're at now <laughs> yeah which no. apple kind of does this for their pro computers but they're so outdated that it's like honestly they're doing pretty good for the m4 the light, the no, 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 no. i'm not talking about the the like processing i'm talking about their like pro computers where you can essentially plug and play different things oh, yeah. into the the metal slots yeah all of their specs for those computers are outdated for the cost that you're paying for them so which is insane. probably what razor would have too yeah. which is t a totally separate argument from like their laptops where they're excelling because yeah. they're doing the common marketplace when did they release this model decision like this sorry this um this proposal this proposed um this was like 2013 2014 oh man they were like heyday 2014 they yeah they could have killed it yeah yeah this was like way early like if they had if they had entered the in a right? deal with nvidia PS4. for this nvidia and am so what i if i were razor in 2014 it hindsight is 2020 obviously mm -hmm. amd and nvidia were not the monoliths that they are now amd was trying like dead in the water essentially mm -hmm. if razor had entered in a deal with amd oh, and man. entered in a deal yeah. with R nvidia yeah. At this point in time, and then Razer had instead created all of the other modules themselves. Yeah, I could see that happening. Where Razer like a, would be the behemoth of the PC industry today. Because you could, you couldn't compete. You wouldn't be able to compete. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah. Everybody gonna, would have a Razer tower. Everybody have a, would have a Christine tower. You wouldn't even have a Razer tower. You'd have a Razer frame. And then yeah. like the frame would be able to go ahead and take in third party developers for specialty things. Whereas yeah. if you wanted to build a PC, let's say that you wanted to go the Intel route, you're yeah. taking on hundreds of hundreds of dollars yeah. additionally to go ahead and uh, do yeah. the same thing that people could do with a frame. Just have a tap. Yeah. yeah. Oh, genius. It would have been amazing. It would have been amazing. Yeah. And they, they proposed it. They just never, never... But they're well, I mean, like capitalism it. works. I mean, if you already yeah. have a lot of money and somebody comes up with an idea that could seriously uh, compete with your model of making money, you're going to shut that down really quick. Yeah, for sure. I, I would I would hazard to guess that if you wanted to talk to somebody from Razor who was affiliated with this entire project, they were probably told, oh, midway through the project, they said, oh, yeah, we're not doing that anymore uh, because yeah. of X amount of dollars. I think one of the biggest problems might actually be the laws of physics when it comes to how many connectors you need for a, P, uh, a CPU and how long the travel distance is. 
for those connectors because with your GPU, you plug it into a slot, right? Yeah. But with the CPU, there's like there's... 8 to 16 to 32 times as many uh, connectors. That's every little dot and pin, right? Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, I think there's physics behind like the distance that they have to travel to do X, Y, and Z. So I have, a, I have a question here. So in terms of pins, how archaic is the use of pins in comparison to um, hardware infrastructure when it comes to computers? Because I, I remember putting that 4950 on and there were no pins. Wait, the CPU? Yeah. Were the pins are also, on the motherboard. No, so I'm talking about so yes, that we have pins on the uh, we used to have pins on the CPU. Yeah. Right? And I know that we still have pins on the MOBO. How archaic is it for me to think that like at this point we should be able to have a mo a interface module that does not require a pin like it could just adhere to the space and what through some form of attachment it stays connected like what do we need a pin it's well you it's have what to I try to come down to it's because you need they need to use gold and on top of that if they don't have an assured like perfect connection everything fails got it it is That's what I need to know yeah it's just so like, yeah. One thing goes wrong; it's all dead. Got it. It's weird. So you so you you need a like a perfect secure, setup. You need a perfect secure connection for it. And sure and as you may know, also, like hair dust can just wiggle its way eventually into your like RAM yeah. slot or your yeah. PCIe while you haven't done anything to it. It hasn't moved. It's weird. You also have to think about like movement. Yeah. Flat surfaces and things like that. Yeah. But like there are so many pins that any prevents form of movement extra movement. Cause, yeah. Because if you even breathe, if it's, if there's any form of minute movement, you're looking at a complete system failure. Well, you mm -hmm. got to remember at this level, the mere expansion and contraction of the metal causing movement. Mm. Yo, it's Sketchflix. Oh, is it my oh. bastard? Yo, this is some deep computer Sketch talk. Flicks. This is full of sword fight. Where's the booze and women? What's up? Where's, there's the booze right there, brother. Oh man, I'm gonna have to call this Tony. One. I, I finished my glass. Yo, what's up, Tony? Oh. We had a wonderful scotch, by the way, earlier. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can't buy it, so we're a little salty. <laughs> yeah, we are a little bit salty about that one. Tony, I yeah, miss Japan. Flavor art ending. I miss Japan, man. Fuck. Dude, oh. next next year I'll I'll be I'll I'm be going. I'm so excited hopefully. for you. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. It'll be I fun. have so I have a coworker. Okay. Who is going to Japan, right? And she is not excited. Wait, she's not excited? She's not excited. Why? I'll why tell not? You why. I'll tell you why. So she is going as a chaperone because her mother will not let her younger sister go with her boyfriend to Japan. So the sister volunteered to pay for her ticket to Japan. She is flying for free to Japan. Yeah, for real. Off with her head. <laughs> Bro, wait, wait, wait. Right? Okay, okay, okay. Nat, Nat, let me let me just say this back to you in words that maybe are will understand a little bit better. Okay, okay. Um so there there's your your friend, yes. this girl, yes. has a sister. Yes. That sister has a boyfriend. Yes. The mother of said sisters don't trust said boyfriend. Yes. And it's like you need to go on a wonderful all expenses paid Trip. Just the just the just the ticket, just the ticket to Japan. I'm gonna get uh, actually, honestly, maybe also um, lodging because she has to be close enough. All to expenses yeah. paid. Yeah. Yeah. Trip yeah. to Japan, <laughs> <laughs> and said sister. Yes, doesn't it, it, like she's considering canceling Eric. We're tripping balls. <laughs> what are we talking about? 
Does she even watch Dan? I, I, hmm. She doesn't have to chaperone. Does nice. she understand that she doesn't have to give a shit about nice. like what the other two do? It she can just go sense. enjoy Japan. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. She's into anime too. It's like so like she knows about it. And she's what like is the problem? Fan, I don't. I okay, okay, okay. Now it I need you to explain to me what did she say? Where her sentence started with "I don't want to go because." Because insert she reason she doesn't want to she doesn't want to babysit don't worry it won't cost too much all of our money is money up any money now that we, yeah, and it's so <laughs> wicked so true it's so sad i'm so sorry tony i know but, that really sucks for your for your money honestly but yeah but no. it she doesn't does she understand that she doesn't have to chaperone eric i don't know like so she like, can just so, lie like did no, the human is, concept of deception not pass her mind like she can just go enjoy japan while her sister and boyfriend go like be crazy like i'll say this i don't know why japan does not mystify her or like a, like pull to her but i will say that if she's not willing to go and chaperone people <laughs> and, see, and see yeah it's like it's it's a wrap like it's one of those things where i'm like i know that you're able to do this and at least like force it for yourself and you're you're totally gonna have fun in japan there's no there is nothing that you yes. cannot conceive of within your interest even if you're not a big fan of japan that you wouldn't be able to find yeah. and, in, and, in, and engage with and enjoy in, in japan Museums, it's a different art, it's a food. it's there's it's, it's the same as any if you travel unless you just absolutely hate traveling and you just want to stay at home and not travel yeah like you're going to enjoy wait it. does yeah. she have a boyfriend no okay yeah she's crazy <laughs> she's not crazy she's crazy she's, crazy. she's she, so like cray cray. i get where she's coming from because like there's no, also you stuff don't. there's You're stuff that i'm yourself. not going to share on the on the oh, podcast okay. because obviously okay. i don't want to go ahead and like that's fair that's possibly fair. she watches this and she's like what like what the fuck what are you talking about? right um, if you are watching this by the way please go enjoy go. japan you'll have please fun go. please you'll, go you'll, 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 you will enjoy it I've gone twice and I want to like, I want to go. So, Wait a second. I so thought you'd gone like times. seven times. I've gone twice. Twice. Gone twice. I, what, I, what I thought you went times? like every freaking summer. No, no baby guaranteed. No baby guaranteed. <laughs> Anthony. Certified chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> Stay on your side of the freaking river, man. No. <laughs> I, I know for me, I'm going to go. I'm going to fight in the Kodakon. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to go travel backpack. Yeah. You say fight. I'm going to see I'm going to see Tony. Yeah. So <laughs> so Josh Tony, is You should totally hook up with Eric. Oh my god. Oh yeah, no. I'm definitely yeah. going to hit up Tony while I'm there. No, Eric, you but uh you're going during like March. It's probably going to be next year around September, October, November. Okay, so it's like Tony, and I'll be not, there for about a bad. month. It's not going to be bad um, yeah. tourism. I would avoid Kyoto right now, though, for sure. I'm hoping next next year it'll it'll be a little bit lighter. But but yeah, so I'm gonna be I'm gonna be spending like a week in Tokyo, and mm -hmm. Josh's best friend is uh is the guy who kind of chaperones the Tokyo the Japan. Um, Tokyo Drift judo team judo hmm. yes and so he knows a bunch of people and talks to people at the Kodakon so me and Josh while we're in Tokyo we want to train with the Kodakon guys and so that's something we're going to be able to do <laughs> that's cool that's yeah. cool that's going to be dope like having Shohei Uchimatami into the floor is going to be it's going to be one of those moments where you're like I, I lived for this this is <laughs> yeah totally to like, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's dope. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's Dude, gonna be I'm, such a cool experience. I'm stoked I'm like for you. Um, I don't know. So I'm hoping that I can eventually convince my coworker to go. But if not, it is what it is. I'm not too worried about it. Honestly, I really want to go back. Uh, I know we're going to the Philippines. Um, 
sometime soon, like I believe in March during my spring break um, time, if I'm not employed somewhere else and then I don't have spring break anymore, I'll have to figure that out. But um, yeah, I really want to get back out there because I, I <laughs> now are you, I are you, it. how do you, how do you do with flying that? I'm fantastic. Are you a good flyer? I'm fantastic. Because like, I'm not a good thing, flyer. The only thing that sucks is whenever I'm like in a, like a very uncomfortable seat, like it, uh, it wrecks me. Like I will be bodily harmed for like a good week or two. Yeah, we we did a red eye last night. So uh, we left at Las Vegas last night at 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m. Mm-hmm. We got into Atlanta this morning at 5 a.m. And you're not and a good flyer. We, we get onto this flight, and of course, the pilot's like, hey, guys, it's going to be a bumpy ride. Good luck. So it's anxiety for you. Yeah, I it's a control thing. So yeah. if I could listen to ATC and, like, be... <laughs> yeah, you, Tony's got the right idea. Dude, so I tried that once when I was in flying back from Utah, and the drinking, I could not sleep on the flight. How long does it take from between Utah and Atlanta? Four hours. Okay. Four hours. So let me tell Same you this. for Vegas. Vegas is about four hours. Let too. me tell you this. Going between Atlanta, going between LA and Japan gives you the full ability to have the full spectrum of being drunk. I feel like four like four hours between like a flight stop too short doesn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. Like hey, Tony knows. Yeah. So 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 I'm gonna have my longest flight of my life in two weeks. I'm gonna be flying. I'm gonna be doing two back to back eight plus hour flights. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be flying to London and then India. Really? Uh, That's the route. Yeah. 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 Eric. Well, remember, so you have the globe. I'm going over the globe. Yeah, he's going over. Yeah, he's not going back. I'm not going across yeah. like this way. I'm going, going over. Yeah. Because it's shorter. It's just a shorter distance. It is. So I would suggest, if you can, because you are ha- because you're going to have longer than you're going to have about six hours for that flight. Eight I, hours. Eight hours. I would yeah. fit in your inebriation time or your buzz time to to peak within the two three hour mark like whatever that you have to do don't yeah. sleep the night before Dude, sleep don't, on the don't, flight no, don't listen to this crazy fucker hey, tony <laughs> sh- tony shut the fuck up uh, <laughs> don't listen to this motherfucker don't man. listen to this bastard <laughs> <laughs> so I had this. Uh, so I sat in the uh, the uh, emergency seat this morning, and of course, when you're in the emergency seat, that's where one of the flight attendant jump seats is. Uh-huh. And so the flight attendant was there, and it was this girl who lived out of Atlanta. And so, of course, me and my wife were talking to her, and my wife was like, "Oh, you know, he's like a nervous." She she asked me if I was a nervous flyer. I was like, yeah, "I get a little anxious on plane." She's like, "Oh, I I love turbulence." She's like, turbulence puts me to sleep. It's a am- the bumpier the ride, the more pleasant it is for me. Wow. And then you she's like, like that. Yeah, if you if you see me freaking out, that's the only time. If I'm chill, you can be chill. You're gonna be fine. And then she's like, Yeah, there's only one time in 15 years she was actually on a plane that lost an engine. A commercial plane that lost an engine. And she was sitting here telling this story as we're taking off. I'm like, this bitch right here needs to shut up. <laughs> that is I was not, like, that is oh not my for God. that you use to on pure persons who are nervous about. Flying. Oh my God. You want to die. Oh She's like, yeah. And it apparently was like 10 years ago. She was on a flight that lost an engine and she was like, yeah, that one was pretty bad. But I mean, it was fun. I was like, this girl's crazy. This girl's crazy. This is ridiculous. I So one thing I want to say before, because I know that we're, that we're coming close to the end of this. Um, one thing I want to say, I really hope at some point in time within our lives that we all three go to Japan at one point in time. Hell yeah. Like, it yeah. Is, like it's like it is cemented it, itself as a dream of mine today. Um. I don't know how we would 
interact within that space or if we had significant others i don't know if like we need significant others that during that time or or not i honestly it's probably going to be with significant others let's just be real yeah i uh, yeah yeah but i feel like we have to go together i don't know how that's going to work but i feel like if there's a way if there's a way to get my favorite people to my favorite place I think yeah. that's going to be the best place. Dude, that would be dope. That would be dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm not going to get set in the oh. I promise. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> we can go hang out and turn her loose in Japan. <laughs> right. The- oh, my God. It's just be like, where did we leave Ash Madness. last time that we looked? I don't know, man. You she's like, I made it to Hokkaido. Just, just check out the find my. See where she's at. Dude, she's in, the, she's in Shimaki the Zawa. I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, guys, I have to pee. And I also, I think we've come to the end of this. Yes. 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 I think we're out of time. Oh, that Here. last episode of the Flaviar was actually pretty dope. Yeah. It was good. And uh, it was pretty good. I guess. Oh my god, wait, before don't even talk about it. Did you play a game on your Steam Deck? And what was it? Oh, did you did Eric, did you play one on your Steam Deck? So I I did not get to play too much on my Steam Deck on this trip. Uh but he'll have to But I ahead. but I will on the next flight. Okay. okay. Um I the one that I did play though would be interesting to talk about maybe for just a minute i like how so i asked I, him to keep it short just quick answer yeah, and then he, he just go, keeps going he's like nasty has to pee oh i'm gonna take i'm gonna God. talk slower than i've talked this whole time i'm gonna pee in a fucking bottle dude so Jesus Christ, come on. i oh, shut up <laughs> I so will sign I, this I, entire podcast off myself. <laughs> oh my god! So so I did. Pl- I actually tried out some Yu-Gi-Oh Master Duel. Funnily yes. enough, hell yes. Do not go in depth. Just say it. You will. I won't. I won't. Yes. Fantastic. Very interesting. We'll talk about it next time. We'll talk about it next time in the next podcast. Subscribe, like, do all the things, all the things that the Doobly Do. Bye. Thank you for watching. Fifty average viewers every episode has been awesome. Okay. PC in the next one. Later, dudes. Bye. Kawaii <laughs> Disney. Oh, so this.